Yeah, like that, like that near, like that almost and in, not infinite, but but large enough to feel infinite supply of uh, invincibility items that uh, made raping the final bosses and the uh, ultra, ultra epic uh, secret boss um, insanely easy and tedious. Number one hundred and fifty-five. Evil may live forever, but it doesn't age well. Even though it took the greatest armies in the world and all the world's greatest magicians to steal away an ancient evil in an apocalyptic war, once that ancient evil breaks free, three fairly inexperienced warriors can destroy it. <laughs> Shining force. Shining force. Although that, that, is, that is an upgrade from three fairly inexperienced warriors to 20 fairly inexperienced warriors, but I hardly think it makes a difference. For the um, Hobbit rule. Yes, yes. 156, the Sephiroth Memorial Escape Clause. Any misdeed up to and including multiple genocide is forgivable if you're cool enough. <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if you're not that cool enough, as the constellation applies, you will be giving a legion of fangirls to protect you. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, this is a, this is a rule specifically uh, aimed at fan fiction, isn't it? Good, I would say so. All the fan fiction that that tries to resurrect Sephiroth and or Cipher as a very good character, usually doing it very shittily. Um, one fifty seven. A rule that hopefully has something to do with actual games. Doomed Utopia Theorem. Law of Zeal. All seemingly ideal utopian societies are powered by some dark force and are therefore doomed to swift, flashy destruction. <laughs> yes. Uh, no, nothing comes to mind. Um, right. I. You know what? I can't think of it in... I can't think of a, a specific example either, but I'm sure I ran into that cliche at some point. Number 158, the party guidance rule. Somewhere in the last third of the story, the hero will make a stupid decision, and the rest of the party must, rem must remind him of all the things they have learned while being with him in order to return the hero to normal. The Yugi Moto rule. <laughs> the, um, uh, wait, there's something that's... Oh, the Captain S rule. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm assuming all three of us have watched Captain S, right? Yeah, I have. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yes. Number 159. Bad is good, baby, yeah. The heroes can <laughs> always count on the support of good haunted vampires, dragons, thieves, demons, and chainsaw murderers in their quest to save the world from evil. And on the other and on hand... <laughs> Number 160, good is bad, baby. Watch out for generous priests, loyal military officers, and basically anyone in a position of authority who agrees to help you out, especially if they save your life and prove their sincerity innumerable times. They're usually plotting your demise in secret, at least when they can fit it into their busy schedule of betraying their country, sponsoring in international terrorism, and stealing candy from small children. <laughs> <laughs> and will stab you in the back at the most inconvenient moments unless they fall under 161, General Leo's exception, honorable and sympathetic people who work for the other side are always the genuine article. Of course, they'll be busily stabbing you in the front, so either way you lose. <laughs> Eventually, though, they'll fall prey to number 162, the ineffectual ex-villain theorem Colonel Mullen rule. No matter how tough and badass one of the other side's henchmen is, if he bails to the side of good, he'll turn out to be not quite tough and badass enough. The main villain will defeat him easily, but don't weep. Usually he'll manage to escape just in time, leaving you to deal with the fate that was meant for him. For him. Leaving, leaving you to deal the, the, with the fate that was meant for him. Uh, <laughs> okay. Number um, 163. All the, uh, all the time in the world. Well, the Renoa rule. Unless there is a running countdown clock right there on the screen, you have as long as you want to complete any task. Such as, say, rescuing a friend who's hanging by one hand from a slippery cliff edge thousands of feet in the air, no matter how incredibly urgent it is. Dawdle or hurry as you will, you'll always make it just in the nick of time. <laughs> if that rule had applied in the final battle of Resident Evil 5, uh, I would have been so much happier and my thumb would have hurt a little less. Yes, because we all know we have to punch rocks in order to get to the last boss. 
Yeah. Oh, oh, I was talking about playing a Sheva where you have to um, jam a button for like ten fucking minutes as fast and hard as you can, otherwise you will fall into a pit of lava. Hmm. I thought you meant the whole you can't leave her alone. You have to, you know, move the boulder down, but whatever. <laughs> You don't, you, don't, you don't move it, you punch it. <laughs> yes, you punch it. <laughs> 164, ladies first, Beleza rule. When things really start falling apart, the villain's attractive female henchman will be the first to jump ship and switch to the side of good. Sadly, she still won't survive until the end credits, because later she will sacrifice her life out of unrequited love for the villain. Uh-huh. Yes. Um... I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I've seen that entire rule used at any one point in any one character, but I'm pretty sure I've seen each individual part of it at least six hundred times each. Johnny, uh, did you read one? Solaris went on and did a whole, quite a few of them, but you go ahead. Okay, uh, number one sixty-five: trial by fire, or the Cecil rule. Any dark and brooding main characters will ultimately be redeemed by a long, arduous, quasi-spiritual quest that seems difficult at the time, but in the great scheme of things, just wasn't that big of a deal after all. Uh, huh. Yes, yes. Why? I don't know. Number 166, yeah. the key item rule. Never discard, sell, or otherwise remove permanently from your possession any items you begin the game with or acquire within the first town. This is especially true for items that seem to have no practical use because of 167, the law of inverse practicality, or the key <laughs> item, corollary. Corollary. Nuclear. Nuclear! <laughs> it's corollary, <laughs> damn it. Any item that you can acquire will have some sort of pur- a certain sort of purpose. Those that seem to be useless and have no practical value at all always tend to have great power later on. The earlier you get the item, the later in the game it will be used. The longer the span of time between acquisition and use, the more powerful the item is. It's corollary. It doesn't even look like corollary. Stop saying that. Nuclear? (laughs) Nuclear! (laughs) Does anybody even know where I'm getting the nuclear line from? No. No? Watch the movie Get Smart with Steve Carell. And you'll see okay. where I got the line from. <laughs> okay. All right. I, whoever's I, doing, whoever it goes next. 168, way to go, Surge. It will eventually turn out that for a minimum of the first 60% of the game, you are actually being manipulated by the forces of evil into doing this their sinister bidding, bidding for them. In extreme cases, this may go as high as 90%. Legacy of pain. <laughs> the clear implication is that it would have been better to not get involved in the first place. Dude, that actually scared me. <laughs> <laughs> That is true, though. Yeah. No, like, no, in Legacy of Kane, in Legacy of Kane, you are being manipulated for a full two and a half games into doing the evil, the evil villain's bidding, and you continue to be manipulated off and on throughout the third game, depending on which character you are playing as. It's like Number- nothing at all in that game is of the hero's own free will. Next. Number 169, Gilligan's Prescription. (laughs) Any character who has amnesia will be cured before the end of the game. They usually won't like that when they find out about themselves, though. (laughs) Cloud. (laughs) Yes, yes, indeed, yes. It's like some it's some some sort of inevitable plot point that everyone who has amnesia has a has some sort of. uh, some bad past, whether they're, they're some kind of monster or just were, were something that they didn't want to be. Why is that? Why is it? I guess it would be because it would, their amnesia would be extremely uninteresting if they, if they regained their memory only to find out that they were a Mary Sue. Number 170. Luke, I am your tedious, overused plot device, also known as the Lynx Rule. If there's any chance whatsoever that Major Villain X could be the main care- main lead's father, then it'll turn out that the Major Villain X is the main lead's father. Wait, wait. Lynx was Serge's father? I guess I don't know who that character is. Uh, a Chrono Cross? Oh, right. 
I, I mean, I know you. Uh, I'm pretty sure the uh, the human 